Hello, and welcome to Budget Commander. On this channel, we'll discuss Magic the Gathering topics with a focus on playing Commander on a budget. We'll cover things like deck building, top cards, deck techs, and more. Let's get started. Hello friends, today we have a Thraxamundar deck tech for you. This is a budget deck tech, specifically 2DH, meaning all the cards in the deck are $2 or under with exception to the commander, which can be $5 or under. Total cost of the deck was $57 on the day of recording. And the goal of the deck is to kill our creatures off, our opponents off with our Voltron or commander damage. Thraxamundar forces our opponents to sacrifice a creature when he attacks. And then whenever a player sacrifices a creature, we get to put plus one, plus one counters on Thraxamundar. Great thing about Thraxamundar is he has haste, so the turn you play him, you'll get to use him. But we uh, want to kill our opponents, or keep our opponents' boards completely empty, so we're running a ton of removal in this deck, and just the goal is to just kill everybody's creatures so they can't keep anything on the board, which will hopefully allow us to force them to sacrifice their best creature when we attack, and then deal combat damage. We can also overrun them uh, by playing army, an army of zombies, which you'll see later on. All right, accelerants. We're running Wayfarer's Bobble, which gets us a land of the battlefield early. Uh, Mindstone and Darksteel Ingot both tap for mana, and we can sacrifice the Mindstone to help us draw cards. Uh, we're running all three of the Signets, so Demir, it, and Rakdos Signet. Those tap to help give us extra mana. Talisman of Creativity and Talisman of Dominance both give us colorless, but we can tap them for two of our colors and deal a damage to ourselves if we need some color fixing. Rooftops, Rooftop Storm is a cost reducer specifically for Thraxamundar. So it says you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a zombie creature spells you cast. Thraxamundar is a zombie, so instead of paying seven for him, we can pay zero. Um, so effectively that makes him cost six the first time if we had Rooftop Storm out. We cast Rooftop Storm and then you can pay Thraxamundar for free. If he goes back to the command zone, we do still have to pay commander tax, but that means he would only cost two rather than nine total. So super super good in this deck as it makes him cost really cheap dark ritual is gonna ramp us by giving us some extra mana the, the turn we play it and then often anticipate help us draw and fix our draws a little bit impulse also fixes our draws a little bit and gets us some more cards knight's whisper draws us two and makes us lose two life and then we have painful truths which costs two and a black uh, but you're going to want to make sure you pay blue, black, red for this card as you get to draw X cards where X is the number of colors of mana spent to cast Painful Truths. So you can get three draws and lose three life to, uh, to get the maximum benefit off of Painful Truths. We also have Read the Bones and Factor Fiction which are going to help us fix our draws as well. And then Commence the Endgame, a new card from uh, the most recent Ravnica block. Commence the endgame costs six and it's an instant. So um, ideally you're gonna cast this when you have seven cards in hand. Um, you cast it, it can't be countered. You get a draw two, so you go down to six from playing it. Then you draw two cards going up to eight and then you get to amass X, where X is the number of cards in hand. So we don't run um, armies in this, like, you know, we don't have the army zero zero black zombies. So this is would at best give us, you know, an 8-8, uh, an 8-8 zombie army, which is, which would be cool. We also have Blood Gift Demon, which draws us a card and loses us a life. We can also target an opponent if this will help us finish them off, make them draw a card, but lose a life. But usually we're going to be targeting ourselves. Goblin Dark Dwellers gets us an instant or sorcery with CMC 3 or less from our graveyard. And we get to just cast it right then and there. Harvester of Souls is a 5-5 that whenever a non-token creature dies, you get to draw a card. So we have so much removal in this deck. We're, if we get this guy out and start removing stuff, we're going to be able to keep drawing cards for the rest of the game as long as he doesn't leave. Palace Siege, well, we 
get some versatility here. We can choose cons or dragons. Cons is going to get us a creature back from our graveyard to our hand at the beginning of each upkeep. And dragons is going to drain our opponents for two and gain us two life each turn. Cruel Ultimatum is super powerful. It is hard to cast as far as colors. Two blue, three black, two red. But our opponent that we choose, target opponent is going to sacrifice a creature, discard three cards, and lose five life. And we're going to return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand. We're going to draw three cards and we're going to gain five life. So big swing there as far as like cost your opponent and, and gain for ourselves. The Hill Spell Bomb, we're going to exile uh, our opponent's graveyard, and if we can pay an extra black, we get a draw card off of it. Moving into control, we have Tragic Slip, which can remove anything as long as we a creature has died this turn already. That's the Morbid Ability. Innocent Blood, Seal of Fire, helps us get rid of creatures. Flame Slash, Essence, Essence Scatter, Reality Shift, all help us get rid of more creatures. Snap, go for the throat, ultimate price, get rid of more creatures, terminate control magic and consuming vapor, vapors help us remove more creatures. Control magic is an enchantment so we put it on one of our opponent's creatures and then we gain control of that creature as long as you know the enchantment doesn't get blown up. And then consuming vapors has the ability to rebound so you play it on you know your turn, it's a sorcery so you play it on your turn. And then on your next upkeep, you get to essentially cast it again, and then it gets exiled. So it's going to get rid of at least two creatures. We have Call to the Grave, which is going to force everybody to sacrifice a non-zombie uh, at the beginning of their turn. And then you probably want to make sure you have Thraxamundar out when you cast this, because he's one of the, our few zombies in the deck. Slave of Bolus gets rid of any creature for us, it also allows us to swing with it. Butcher of Malakir punishes our opponents. Should we lose creatures, everybody else has to sacrifice creatures, and hopefully nobody's got creatures on the board uh, if he gets to stick on the table. Curse of the Swine is going to allow us to turn our opponent's creatures into 2-2 two -two boars. Mizium Mortars can get rid of a creature with 4 toughness or less. Or if we overload it, get rid of all of our opponent's creatures with 4 toughness or less. Bonus Hunger forces each of our opponents to sack a creature. If we have the city's blessing, meaning we have 10 or more permanents, then they're going to be sacrificing potentially more than one creature. Then we got Radiant Flames, which can deal 1, 2, or 3 damage to each creature on the board. So we get to choose just like that uh, black card earlier. We can put one, two, or three colors into this depending on how much damage we want to deal to the creatures on the board. Languish is going to give all the creatures minus four, minus four, and Crux of Fate is going to destroy all the creatures in the board as long as there isn't a dragon on the table. Demon of Dark Schemes is going to give all creatures minus two, minus two, so you potentially kill off one or more creatures when he enters. When he enters, you're going to get or when he when creatures die and he's on the battlefield he gets energy counters and then you can use those energy counters by paying two and a black and four energy to put a creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control this is not only your own graveyard but you can target any creature in anybody's graveyard so you've been killing your opponent's stuff all game and then you can steal their best thing archfiend of depravity just forces our opponents to keep their two best creatures and then by force we can use that to get rid of uh, multiple artifacts. Disdainful Stroke and Negate allow us to counter spells into the Royal we can get rid of anything we want, kick it to draw a card. A Braid, Rakdos Charm and Croesus Charm are all versatile cards in that we get to choose what they do whether they're killing off creatures, getting rid of artifacts, getting rid of players graveyards, killing off multiple creatures with one toughness or less uh, so there's a lot of versatility in those three cards there pillage allows us to get rid of an artifact or a land and then we have frost titan which is a 6-6 six, six, and when it enters it taps something down and then each time it attacks we get to tap that thing down or, or tap another thing down you can actually keep two things tapped down 
uh, as long as you're attacking every turn with it. It also is harder to uh, target as it costs an additional two if you want to target the Titan. And then Counterspell is going to be able to get rid of anything for us as long as it's on the stack. Deathbringer Thoktar is a 3-3, but each time something dies it gets a plus one plus one counter. So over the course of the game this guy is going to get really big. And you can also remove counters off of him and deal a damage to a creature or player one uh, at a 1 to 1 ratio. Molten Primordial is a 6-4 with haste and when he enters you can steal a creature from each opponent uh, until end of turn. Those creatures gain haste and so you can steal everybody's creatures and then attack them with their own creatures or kill off one player with all those creatures. And then we have an army of zombies for 8 mana, 5 and 3 black, we get 3 tapped 2-2 two -two zombie creature tokens. If people cannot wipe the board, this will just be killing people off, assuming that their board's been empty. It can also flash back, and so we get a second 13 2-2 two -two zombies. Last utility card is Whisper Silk Cloak. You're probably going to attack it, attach this to Thraxamundar or equip Thraxamundar because it gives him a shroud so nobody can target him but more importantly it makes him unblockable so you can just continue to get those sacrifice triggers and maybe kill off people with Voltron uh, Commander 21 Commander damage as far as lands we have Frostmarsh and Tressorhorn which Tressorhorn sinks which are snow lands but more importantly they give us two of our colors they do enter tapped then we're running the guild gates which also enter tapped but give us two of our colors Submerged Boneyard, Jawar Isle Refuge, and Highland Lake all enter tapped, but they give us two of our colors. Jawar Isle Refuge also gains us a life when it enters. Exotic Orchard, Dismal Backwater, Crumbling Necropolis all give us multiple colors. Dismal Backwater gains us a life, and Exotic Orchard can uh, only give us colors that our opponent's lands control can produce. So could give us all three of our colors or could give us none of our colors. Usually it's going to give us some of our colors if not all of them. Command Tower does give us all our colors and then we have Cinder Barons and Bloodfell Caves which give us black red. Bloodfell Caves enters and gives us life but they both enter tapped. Akum Refuge also enters tapped but gains us life when it enters giving us two of our colors. Same thing for Swift Water Cliffs. Opal Palace can enter and or sorry can fix our colors but it can also give our commander a plus one plus one counter which might be what we need to help finish off an opponent mystifying maze helps us protect or protects us from our opponent's creatures encroaching wastes helps us get rid of pesky lands and temple of the false god helps to ramp us we're running as far as basics five islands five mountains and seven swamps Stats for the decks, or stats for this deck. Uh, give it three stars under acceleration because it had 10 accelerants. Two stars for consistency for having 14 cards that provide consistency. With 33 control cards, this deck got five stars in the control category. That is a lot of control. And then for speed, this deck got five stars as it had an average CMC of 2.07. If you like the idea of just destroying and forcing your opponents to sacrifice their creatures and keeping the board empty, this deck might be for you. Give it a try. Let me know how it goes. Otherwise, let me know what cards you think this deck is missing, what cards would you put in, and what would you swap out for them. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace! Thanks for watching. You can help support this channel by hitting that subscribe button. This will help keep you up to date on content from Budget Commander. If you liked the video, make sure you like the video. Leave me a comment with your thoughts on this topic. And if you think someone else could benefit from this video, feel free to share. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk with you next time.